You have seen the money, the glitz, the glamour and all the fancy television shows but there is more to poker than million dollar buy-ins. There is also a dark side. Never mind the problems with gambling addiction and bankroll management, we are talking about the violent side of poker. In this video, we look at the dark side of poker where players lost more than just a poker hand. Number 1. This story is so insane that it's hard to believe. 61-year-old Arthur Prince was stabbed in the valet area outside of the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City by 57-year-old Vicente Perez after a dispute. The argument wasn't over money or cheating or anything regarding high stakes but instead over a simple poker seat. Arthur Prince was playing in a 1-2 no limit hold'em game and Vicente Perez was on the waiting list. Arthur lost all of his chips in a hand and told the dealer to hold his seat telling everyone at the table that he's going to get more money from the ATM. The dealer apparently does not hear Arthur say this and assumes that he is leaving the game. The dealer announces after a short while that a seat is open. Vicente Perez takes a seat at the table. Arthur comes back to reclaim his seat and finds Vicente occupying it and the two get into an argument. Eventually. Vicente got up from his seat and went outside which only further enraged Arthur because not only does he feel that Vicente unjustly scooped his spot at the table but now he isn't even using it. The argument continued outside and turned violent and Arthur began beating Vicente with his own walking cane. Vicente pulled out a knife and stabbed Prince in the neck hitting an artery and leading to Arthur's death. Vicente, who was photographed by a New Jersey newspaper while being led off to an ambulance covered in blood was subsequently arrested and charged with three felonies. Number 2. Duan Crittenden was arrested after killing three people at his private poker game in Palatka, Florida. According to local police, the game started up on Friday afternoon and lasted till around 6-7 am on Saturday morning. Duan, who claimed players on the table were cheating him, left the game for a few hours only to return armed with a gun and a knife and kill the other three players in the game. According to police, Duan then stole between $2,000 to $9,000 from the poker game. Police initiated a massive manhunt and soon found Duan. Police said that the motive for the killings was that Duan had felt cheated by the other men in the game and decided to exact some revenge. It's unknown whether the men had actually been cheating Duan or whether he had just succumbed to some particularly bad beats and lost his mind. Duan had 18 previous convictions but none of them violent. Just another reason before you should think twice before playing in a private poker game. Before we continue with this video, give me 60 seconds to introduce one of the best anti-detect browsers, OctoBrowser. Anti-detect browsers are very similar to normal browsers but are designed to help you remain undetected while browsing the internet, replace browser fingerprints and allow you to work with multiple accounts at the same time in one profile. Websites nowadays use complicated scripts to collect data such as age, location, interests, etc. to design personalized ads for their users giving them a more customized user experience. But there is a dark side as well. There have been several reports of sensitive personal data being sold online for profits without the data owner's knowledge. Data safety and security have been major issues faced by online browsers globally. Anyone who is on the internet needs to have an anti detect browser, be it casual net surfers or online business owners. Octo Browser provides a solution to all these problems. It works on both Windows and Mac OS and can be used on multiple PCs regardless of the tariff. It does not store your critical profile info, uses additional profile encryption, generates unique fingerprints for all your accounts and browser sessions meaning you wouldn't be spending extra on VPNs, other mirroring softwares or even hardware just to have multiple accounts and offers English speaking support. Click the link in the description to check it out and learn more about Octo Browser. Number 3. Our next story is not only tragic but also bizarre. A 12-year-old girl on the Ailen Islands, located between Finland and Sweden, died after consuming 6 liters of water in a school game of water poker. The rule of the game being that the loser of each hand had to drink a whole glass of water. The girl's water intoxication was not noticed by teachers until they were making a head count of the students later in the evening. The 12-year-old was immediately taken to a hospital but succumbed to brain complications shortly after due to consuming nearly three times the adult limit. Water intoxication can lead to fatal disturbances in brain functions. 
when you drink too much water, the blood gets diluted and salt levels in the blood are increased. The effect is that water is drawn into the brain which then swells up due to the brain's fluid accumulation which can lead to death. The doctors couldn't fathom why anyone would play water poker and said it's a truly dangerous game. Number 4. In March of 2011, California Poker Pro Ernie Scherer was convicted and sentenced to life in prison for killing his own parents, Ernest and Charlene Scherer, in order to collect a $1 million inheritance. Investigators struggled to find someone who could bear such a grudge against the couple. Investigators, after learning Ernest was a professional poker player and engaged local school board member, looked into the possibility of gambling debts and political grudges but turned up nothing. However, Ernest had also taught his son Ernie, 29 at that time, to play poker. Red flags were raised when Ernie's wife reported that he had left for Vegas just two days after his parents' funeral. Despite almost 30 caches in live poker events that included two championships just five days apart at the 2004 Legends of Poker in LA, a probe of Ernie's finances revealed that he was deeply in debt, to the tune of more than $750,000. Ernie had borrowed about $600,000 from his dad to pay for his home and was struggling to pay his property taxes and loans he had taken out to cover gambling losses. Investigators also learned that Ernie was strongly disliked and thought of as an arrogant player by others in the poker world. He was also living a double life with a girlfriend he was lavishing with expensive gifts. After months of recorded calls between Ernie and his wife, in which he came across as less than innocent, detectives made their arrest on February 2009 in Las Vegas. When the trial date arrived, prosecutors were armed with damning new evidence of Ernie buying the presumed weapon, a baseball bat, using cash in an area he was confirmed to have been in. That plus the other circumstantial evidence and Ernie's suspicious phone calls with his wife were enough to yield a conviction on March 3, 2011 where he was handed two life sentences. Number 5. The most famous tragic poker story is the one involving the dead man's hand. The story goes that a local drunkard named Jack McCall was playing poker with Wild Bill Hickok who was a famous lawman, gambler and gunslinger. Apparently after joining a poker table with Hickok, McCall ended up losing every single dime. Hickok gave him some money to get some food and advised him not to play again until he could afford to cover his losses. McCall was insulted. The next day, Jack McCall entered the saloon to see Hickok playing poker again and was furious. Hickok usually sat with his back to a wall because he was paranoid about being killed but on that fateful day, he did not because another player wouldn't change seats with him. McCall came up behind Hickok and shot him at the back of his head. The lawman was killed instantly. Hickok died holding two pair of aces and eights and the dead man's hand was born. Whether Hickok had held that hand has been debated for years but the tale remains as does the hand's name. McCall claimed he had killed Wild Bill to avenge his brother's death. At the time of the killing, Deadwood had no law so a group of miners held a trial in the McDaniels Theatre. After two hours, Jack McCall was found innocent and headed out of town. He ended up in Wyoming where his mouth got him into trouble. McCall bragged so often about killing Wild Bill that finally a US Marshal arrested him. Since his trial was not held in a legal territory because Deadwood was still a gold camp in Indian territory, the trial was deemed illegal. McCall was sent to Yankton, the capital of the Dakota Territory where he was retired, found guilty and hanged in the spring of 1877. And lastly number 6. In 2010, Jonathan Duhamel won the 2010 WSOP main event taking home a first prize of $8.9 million. Soon after, he had a six-month relationship with Bianca Rojas. Although it looked like they ended their relationship amicably, Rojas had other plans. During the 2011 holiday season, two men broke into Duhamel's condominium, heavily assaulted the WSOP champ and forced him to open his safe. The thief stole a $10,000 PokerStars Rolex Submariner watch, $115,000 in cash and Duhamel's main event bracelet valued at $50,000. A week later, four suspects, including Rojas, were arrested. The WSOP bracelet was found near a dumpster and nearly half of Duhamel's money was recovered. During the trial, Bianca Rojas was described as the mastermind of the operation and sentenced to 42 months in prison.